Howdy team, happy Thursday and happy Thanksgiving. I hope that you have had an excellent day and you've eaten lots of good food and enjoyed time with at, at least a little bit of family, if not a lot of family. Um, I am currently up in Kansas. I'm sitting in my grandparents' office in their house in Girard, Kansas, where grandma and grandpa have lived their entire lives. This is the town my dad grew up in and uh, Dad's actually their pastor now up here, which is pretty cool. So we got to be with them and all my siblings, and it was good. Um, I, just fun bonus here for you. If you want to see what little TJ looks like, I'm the guy with the, the bushy head there. I'm holding my little sister. I'm 11 years older than her. She's still in diapers, so I'm betting I'm 12, maybe 13 there. But uh, I figured you'd get a kick out of seeing what I used to look like and what I look like with hair, no less. It's fitting that this week's lesson is about when life hurts because today has been a painful day. Uh, about one o'clock this morning, uh, my grandfather died here in the house. Um, it was, we knew it was coming, but it didn't make it any easier. I was, I was with him. My dad was with him, dad's sister, and my grandma. Um, I actually had to carry him out of the house with the funeral home. That's a whole different story, but I started my Paul Bearer work early. Uh, guys, life hurts. I, I know many of you know what that feels like to lose a grandparent or to lose a parent or a sibling. Some of you have lost children. There is very little of life sometimes that doesn't hurt. And the truth is, where we've got to start is that's always the result of sin. Sometimes it's the result of our own sin. Sometimes it's the result of somebody else sinning against us. And sometimes it's the result of the sin of our great-great-grandparents, Adam and Eve. See, God told them back in the beginning, don't, don't disobey. It will cost you. You will die. And they didn't listen. And all throughout the scriptures and all throughout the history of the world, God continues to raise up his hands and say, don't, 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 don't. And, and we continue to disobey and things continue to just be painful. It's like we're constantly sticking our hands in a mousetrap and expecting a different result. And then there are times where we didn't do anything wrong, but stuff just happens. And that's, that is the running effect of sin in this world. Sin has wrecked everything about planet Earth, everything about this universe. It says that all of creation is groaning because it's longing for Jesus to come back and do what he promised he was going to do. Jesus is going to come back and fix this. And that's the only thing that's going to going to help is Jesus has to fix this because we can't. I used to, when I was younger, I used to be so impressed with the question, why does bad things happen to good people. And now that I'm older and I understand more about the scriptures and I've lived, maybe not significantly longer, but, but longer, I, I don't think that's a good question at all. To me, the better question is why do good things happen to bad people? Because if you read Romans chapter 3, that's you and me and everyone, we're not good. We, we constantly rebel and we constantly disobey and we constantly whine and groan and complain and just push back and we're not good. And yet God in his infinite kindness, in his immaculate mercy, in his incredible patience continues to let us live. He continues to bless us and give us incredible lives. And yet we still deal with pain. And so we wait and we long for Jesus to come and fix it and he will. He's promised he will. He's either going to come and fix it for us or he's going to pluck us out of here and just fix us. And either way, I'm game. The question is, what do we do with all this suffering? Last week, we looked at Job. The story of Job is fascinating. And, and my favorite part of the whole book, and this might sound funny, is chapter 3 when Job's friends show up. And it says they sit with him for a week and they don't say anything. They're just with him. That was the best and really only good move any of his friends made. See, part of the beauty of the church, part of the beauty of the family, this is exactly what my family's been doing. The reason why we congregated wasn't just for Thanksgiving. We knew that Grandpa was going to be saying goodbye. It was We know that we need each other, especially when life hurts. 
we need God's grace and praise God. He gives it freely. We need his presence and he gives that freely. But one of his graces he's given to us is physical family members. And then the next step he's taken for us is he's given us spiritual family members, the church. He has given us the privilege of intersecting with one another's lives and helping out when life hurts, not if, but when. And so I pray this Sunday, by all means, go through the material and there's good stuff and there's excellent questions and the passages are obviously perfect. But I hope that you'll take some time this week as a connection group, committing to one another to stand in the gap for each other, not only in your prayers and not only in your encouragement, but when life hurts, look each other in the eyes and say, I'm going to be here for you. And some of you already do that so, so well. That's a given because you've been doing it for years. But continue to make that commitment to one another. And for the f- new folks that have joined us, welcome and then say, this is part of being not only part of the family of God, but this is what it means to be a part of the Lake Church family of God. We care for one another because life is messy and life is painful and Jesus is good and he has given us the privilege and the opportunity and the power to care for one another. So let's do that. Guys, I love y'all. I'm excited to see you on Sunday. We'll be home uh, here soon. And uh, uh, again, happy Turkey Day. Love y'all. Bye.